Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 91, and I'm going to try to do this all in one take. I'm not gonna edit this video whatsoever. Um, just got back from a really long day of traveling. Ashley and I went out of town for vacation for the entire last week, which has been terrific. But as always, when you come back from vacation, there's a little bit of jet lag that's involved with that. But I wanted to actually get a vlog out this week for you guys, because this last week, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal about uh, Apple wanting to make the AirPods Pro and future generations of them, I'm sure, into a health device. And I've already published a couple of different videos about Apple and their AirPods that you can kind of turn into some sort of a hearing aid, but they wanna take it a step further and do other things with their devices as well. Now, some of you who are, have been paying attention or are pretty keen on what uh, Apple has been doing with their AirPods, they just added a conversation boost feature with the iOS 15 point something. I can't remember exactly which one it was that they came out with, but it might've been 15.0. But a conversation boost feature which allows you to actually boost speech coming from in front of you and not necessarily from speech coming from around you, which is a really cool feature. It's, it's something that's basically called directionality when you can identify, which, or the hearing aids rather, can identify which direction sound is coming from and primarily amplify the sounds coming from in front. That is not something that Apple had uh, prior to now. So that's kind of a cool feature. Um, but I really wanted to kind of get into the aspect of this, you know, uh, them bringing out these different features and basically turning these earbuds into actual hearing aids and what that ultimately means for someone who has hearing loss. You know, people ask me, you know, what do I think about these particular devices being used as hearing aids? And I have to say that I'm actually a big fan of it. Uh, one of the big reasons I am a fan of it is because there is such a low adoption rate of hearing treatment as it is. And if there's anything that can increase the adoption rate of hearing treatment, whether it's, you know, uh, just some cheap amplifier, whether it's, uh, you know, something that's like an OTC hearing aid or whether or not it's full on hearing treatment with traditional hearing aids, I think that anything that can be done to create additional awareness and uh, essentially, I, I call it market penetration, that's from a business perspective, but hearing aid adoption. You know, here in the United States, we do not have the best hearing aid adoption rates. In fact, across the world, even in countries that hearing aids are given away to their citizens for free because they're a part of their you know national health program, um, they have really low adoption rates of hearing aids as well. So I think one of the ways that we potentially could have higher adoption rates is to have devices that are very easily accessible without requiring, you know, access to a hearing care professional. Now, why would I be a fan of it then? Well, the reason I'd be a fan of it is because as time goes on, if someone, you know, decides to purchase a set of AirPods Pro, they turn them into hearing aids with that feature inside of their, their iPhone, they essentially have at least an entry point into getting hearing treatment. Now, is it perfect right off the bat? Not really. I mean, I've had some patients come in who they wanted to make sure that the AirPods Pro were amplifying sound appropriately. I've had some people who've gotten a decent amount of amplification out of the AirPods Pro, enough for me to actually write a letter to their employer saying that the, your employees should be allowed to wear their AirPods Pro during work because it does does technically help them hear better, even though it wouldn't be as good, in my opinion, as professionally fit, you know, customized, fully customizable hearing aids. But I think it's really a good stepping stone. I think Apple, when I'm thinking of like OTC slash direct to consumer style hearing aids, I think that they have something uh, that's really good right now, something that I think would be uh, big enough for the adoption rates to increase. When I say big enough, meaning they already have a lot of sales of the AirPods Pro. In fact, Apple's the, the leading uh, company when it comes to earbuds in the entire world. I mean, they sell billions of dollars. They sell, uh, let me see. I think that they the amount of AirPods that they sell 
is double the entire hearing aid market. I think it's like $15 billion is what they sell. And the hearing aid market is what, five to $6 billion? Like the entire hearing aid market is five to $6 billion annually. And then here you have AirPods Pro selling like $20 billion or something something ridiculous like that. Um, so they have these devices in people's ears already and all they have to do is go and turn on a feature. So if you're someone who has hearing loss and you have AirPods Pro, it would be silly for you not to try to enable that particular feature to help you hear better. And then that kind of gets you kind of used to amplification. And then once you're used to amplification, you're like, you know what, I wanna optimize this even more. Well. You know, I've done testing. You guys should go check out the review that I've done of the Apple AirPods that I turned into hearing aids. They did a decent job. I mean, uh, my review is uh, what I like to call a relatively unbiased review. I try to be as unbiased as possible. And in my opinion, I felt like the review was favorable towards the AirPods Pro being used as hearing aids. So I think that if that's what it takes for someone to kind of get their feet wet, with hearing treatment to correct their level of hearing loss, I think that's terrific. So then that leads to the next question, which is, well, what do I really feel about the over-the-counter hearing aid act, uh, which is supposed to make hearing aids accessible without a prescription, without going to see a hearing care professional, without a hearing test or anything like that. And what I would say is, well, I don't think it's gonna change a whole lot, <laughs> to be honest, I don't think that you know, any regulation that they put out is going to make more options for consumers. There are already more options for consumers. That is not going to change. I mean, there might be some companies who've been holding back a little bit, but all of the big companies like Apple, like Bose, all these consumer electronics companies that are the biggest targets of potential lawsuits if they were to release hearing aids before over-the-counter uh, guidelines came out, um, they're doing it anyway. So it's not really like you're gonna have more availability. You'll have all these other little companies that have been essentially selling over-the-counter hearing aids for years at this point. Uh, there's, uh, you can get hearing aids off eBay at this point. There's no limitation to getting hearing aids over-the-counter without a hearing test, without going to see an audiologist or hearing instrument specialist. So I guess I don't really see what the point of it is from an accessibility standpoint. What I'm hoping that the Over-the-Counter Hearing Aid Act actually does is create some kind of framework or guidelines or regulation around it. But that requires the FDA or whoever the governing body is going to be, most likely the FDA, that would require them to enforce the regulations. So I guess I just, which I have no faith in them doing because they have not been enforcing the, uh, the essentially what they submitted uh, several years ago because in 2017 that's when it was signed into law. They've had a certain amount of time where they had to come up with the guidelines and which they're still doing and in the meantime they said that no one could sell a hearing aid over the counter. Well that's been happening like crazy over the last two, three, four years potentially at this point. So um, I just don't see how any type of regulation. I just don't think it's going to change much. I mean, I know that there's people who are like, oh, great, now we're going to have, you know, a lot of competition and it's going to drive down prices for traditional hearing aids or it's going to uh, prevent regulation to help these, you know, new companies start up with these great features to help people self adjust their own devices. And, you know, I just don't think it's going to do any of that. I mean, there's a lot of individuals. Now, I again, I gave a favorable review. I would say globe. I would say that I gave a generally favorable review of the Bose sound control hearing aids. And there were a lot of people who were like, "Man, like I thought Bose was going to make something substantially better than that. They're not even Bluetooth, you know, compatible and connectable to do streaming of audio or anything like that." And, and people are like, "Really? Like that's that's what came out with Bose?" So. I just don't think that it's gonna have a, a huge play as we go into the future here. So um, I would love to see a, a lot of change and a lot of uh, regulation happen with over-the-counter or direct-to-consumer type devices. I just don't see that happening. I see a lot of consumers uh, essentially getting ripped off which they're currently being ripped off at this point so that's not gonna change a whole lot. Um, but I, I think that 
the biggest risk of all of it is, is that when people try these over-the-counter devices that will eventually come out, in addition to what we already have out and available right now, I think that the biggest risk is them trying it, having it not work, and then if it doesn't work, they're like, well, I guess doing hearing aid treatment doesn't work for me. And, and I feel like they're just gonna give up at that point. And you know, we might see an initial spike in hearing aid adoption rates if that's considered hearing aid adoption. But then if there's a lot of individuals who don't get a whole lot of benefit, which I know that there will be. I mean, I get comments all the time on my YouTube channel saying, hey, I went and tried these particular devices or those devices, whatever, and they had a horrible experience with them. And if it wasn't for them, being educated enough through watching some content that I've created and doing their own research online and whatever platform, hearingtracker.com, whatever, to, to learn more about hearing treatment, they would have stopped at that point and not continued on to try and do you know more thorough treatment with a hearing care professional. So I know that this might come across as self-serving to some degree, but you know, facts are facts. I mean, I, I do a ton of, review, of reviews of different products that are out there to treat hearing loss. I am really well ingrained inside of the community of individuals with hearing loss who are, are using hearing treatment. And I see and hear everything that goes, not everything, but a lot of stuff that goes on out there with consumers and how they you know, are either having a really good experience with a certain type of treatment or a horrible experience with, with a certain type of treatment. So you know, I just don't think that things are going to change a whole lot other than hopefully us seeing a spike in hearing aid adoption rates. And as long as there's enough information there online for individuals to realize that if over-the-counter or direct-to-consumer does not work for them, that there are other options that they have at their disposal. So I guess we'll ultimately see what happens. I mean, uh, we could all be right, we could all be wrong, who knows? I guess time will tell. I'm still waiting to see. I mean, you know, when we had the executive order here several months ago now, I think we're right around that time period where uh, the executive order said that we should be having these accelerated guidelines coming out and of course we still do not see them at this point i would you know be surprised if we didn't see them at some point in 2022 but even when they do come out you guys know my thoughts on this already i just i just gave it to you i don't think it's going to change a whole lot um which is you know unfortunate or fortunate depending on which side of the fence you are on i happen to be on the side of the fence where I can see things from both perspectives. I, I see things from a hearing care professional who wants individuals to get the best treatment outcome humanly possible, but I can also see it on the side of the fence where there's individuals who cannot afford the best hearing treatment possible and who don't have access to really high quality hearing treatment. And for that group of individuals, we need something for them to at least get them started and to at least get them treated to some degree because you know, I would say that treating your hearing loss 50% is better than not treating your hearing loss at all. So if the option comes down between not treating your hearing loss and going with an over-the-counter slash direct-to-consumer style hearing aid or amplifier, I would say that going with that, the, any form of treatment would be better than not doing anything at all. So we'll see what happens at the end of the day. It's, it's nice to see that Apple is continuing to kind of push the envelope with their AirPods. Not only will be, they be turned more into hearing aids, which they already have been, but they're looking at doing things like slouch detection, so making sure that you keep really good posture and also being able to take temperature readings inside of your ear. And of course, those things could both be beneficial for individuals from a health perspective. But uh, one of the things that was a little surprising in the article is that they're not sure if they'll roll these things out. So this could just be a, you know, it's, it's a nice way to get into the news, but it might not actually come to fruition. And if it does, again, this is not gonna be until most likely some point in 2022, maybe even 2023, who knows? What I do know is that Apple is gonna continue to push the envelope 
they're go I think that they could make a pretty solid hearing aid at the end of the day, but they have a lot of work to do based on, on my testing that I did in my review. So now if you have not seen that review, I do highly recommend that you go check it out. I will link that review in the description below. But guys, I am tired. This probably seemed like a very incoherent ramble of a vlog, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. And if you did, go ahead and give it that thumbs up. And as always, I'll see you next week.